let's start with the uh, the obvious involving uh, Bryce Harper. What happened yesterday, best you can tell? You know, I, I think that they felt like they had to see what they could get for him. You know, I think they felt like they'd be irresponsible not to see if they could get blown away with an offer. Um, and they didn't. And, you know, I don't think they were ever determined to sell Bryce. But like Mike Rizzo, their GM, said, you know, it would be pretty stupid of us not to see if we could get something. And, and from all I heard, they were asking for some pretty ridiculous packages from people. They didn't get them, and they said, we're just going to see what happens the rest of the way with what we've got and let Bryce play it out. Is there any possibility um, that there was uh, something that was close enough to tantalize Mike Rizzo and ownership just put the kibosh on it, Chelsea? That's what we're still kind of trying to piece together. I don't get the sense that it got that close, um, but it might have. But they, they were definitely talking late into the night on Monday night, um, and then at some point Tuesday morning, Rizzo says, no, you know, we're not going to do this. So, um Maybe there was a moment in there where it got close. They they kind of said, we can't pull this off. But, you know, the sense I get is that the offers were never going to be quite enough. And, you know, so they said, they called Bryce and said, hey, you're staying. Well, I mean, you, you have to figure the offers would never get, uh, you know, close enough. And the fact that, uh, you know, you've got a guy represented by Scott Boris, and usually those clients do like to test the free agent market. So you're only renting him. Um, and if you're only renting him, then, you know, somebody like Rizzo can't turn around and trade a generational talent like Harper and say, we only could get this because he's a rental. I don't think Nationals fans who cheered uh, at the home run derby would be able to swallow that. So I guess the ultimate question is, is why was there a listening tour at all, Chelsea? Um, you know, I, I think... You had to, you know, I, I mean, I don't really have a problem with them sort of looking around and, and seeing if someone will bite, because like you say, he is a generational talent. And, and if you're, say you're the Astros and, and you could tell your fans, you, you bought Bryce Harper and, and you're going to go for it again, or, or, you know, a team sort of on the cusp, like the A's or somebody like that. And you just go for it for a few months. I mean, that, that sends a pretty strong message as well for teams that might be sort of not your usual contenders. So I think there was reason to believe they might get something. And also he makes, a lot of money and if if there was a point i think they were really considering maybe offloading a lot of payroll and just found that they weren't getting the value they wanted but had there been a wholesale sell-off which i think was you know was something they were thinking about you could offload the rest of a 21 million dollar salary and, and get something back too i think that's very appealing because they're over the luxury tax and they hate that so uh, chelsea james of the washington poster then i guess let me just put the the, the finest point on the question as I, as I can then is there something wrong with bryce harper in dc that that they just decide that even if they do get bowled over let's trade them because again the generational talent i, I don't think that the angels are going to be on a listening tour for mike trout anytime soon and yet they were for bryce harper in dc is there something something underneath the surface that is just inherently wrong and not a match there chelsea well, I mean, I think it'd be silly not to, sh you know, Mike Trout's not a free agent anytime soon, and, and they're not, you know, really in it. I think this team had an argument to make that they should sell and get something for all their pending free agents. So, you know, I don't think if, you know, obviously this wasn't the topic of discussion last year. It, it's just sort of, you know, they're almost out of it. We, do we have to go scramble to get something? That being said, I, I do think there's sort of a, not a tension, but Bryce is a polarizing guy. You know, I think this organization has really cleared the way for him to feel comfortable. And in so doing, even created some double standards. You know, we saw Trey Turner get benched for not running something out. We saw Bryce get potentially talked to if that. And, you know, that's just one example that, you know, people notice. People around the clubhouse notice. And I think this, you know, they got the arbitration deal done with Bryce two years in advance. They didn't want to, you know, have anything contentious happening this year. They just wanted him to get the free agency and give themselves a good chance to keep getting along when they're negotiating. So, you know, I, I think he's somebody they really have to plan around and, and they maneuver around and they do a lot for. And um, so it's it, there is a tension there, but it's it's not, you know, that, you know, Mike Brazil loves Bryce Harper. He has said that he defends it to the death. You know, Dave, Dave Martinez and Harper have a great relationship, but he's still Bryce Harper. He's the guy that, that everybody has an opinion on. And, and there, there's weight that comes with that. There's sort of responsibility on the part of an organization. And, and it's, I think it wears sometimes. For somebody who's been around Bryce Harper uh, for as long as you have, 
And nationally, you know, we see him. He wants to make baseball fun again. We see the video, you know, that I guess his brother put out of him using two hair dryers to hair blow his hair. <laughs> we saw what he did at the Home Run Derby. He is definitely um, one of the most recognizable names, faces. Who is he, though? Who Who is Bryce Harper, best you can tell? It's tough to tell. I mean, I've been around him four years, and I've, I've tried to figure that out. I think I think the part they, that people don't see is that he's a guy who – really loves his family, isn't obsessed with baseball, you know, you know, doesn't, it, he doesn't love the spotlight as much as it seems like he does, or maybe as he did early in his career. And I think sort of the weight of everything that, you know, his prominence has brought onto him has, has seemed to weigh on him the last couple of years. And he's, he's not the make baseball fun again guy anymore. You know, he's, he's quiet. He doesn't talk a lot in the clubhouse. He's, you know, he wants to go home after games and, and get out of there. He's not trying to call attention to himself. So it's really interesting, but, you know, for me right now, Bryce Harper is a guy who's feeling pressure and, and just sort of a normal human who has a lot of people looking at him, a lot of people analyzing him, and as a result has sort of just kind of tried to sink into the background as much as he possibly can, but nobody lets him. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.